on the 20th day of March, 1775, Tabitha Tarbell, a slender girl, was walking along a country road. She had a basket of eggs in her hand. She seemed to be in a great hurry and looked anxiously as she went, for those were dangerous times. Tabitha, or Tabby as she was called, lived in Concord, Massachusetts. She was a bright-eyed girl of 14, full of vigor and patriotism. Tabby was agitated and angry too by the rumors that the British were coming to Concord. They were coming to destroy the supplies stored there. In nearly every house, something valuable was hidden. Gunpowder, axes, tents, guns and cartridges. The cannons were hidden in the woods. A guard of ten men patrolled the town at night. The brave farmers were getting ready for what they felt must come. There were Tories in the town who gave the enemy all the information they could gather. Therefore, much caution was necessary in making plans. Passwords and secret signals were used. Messages were sent from house to house in all sorts of strange ways. Such a message now lay hidden under the eggs in Tabby's basket. The girl was carrying a secret message from her uncle to Deacon Cyrus Hosmer, who lived at the other end of town. She had been employed several times before in the same way and had done her job well. Suddenly, Tabby's cheeks turned pale. Her heart gave a thump as two men came in sight and stopped suddenly on seeing her. They were strangers. Although nothing in their dress indicated it, the girl quickly knew that they were British soldiers. They exchanged a few whispered words. Then they came forward. My pretty lass, can you tell me where Mr. Daniel Bliss lives? Asked the younger man with a smile. Tabby was sure now that they were British. Bliss was a well-known Tory, but she showed no sign of alarm. She answered politely. Yes, sir, a little further down. They went on, never dreaming that the innocent girl was soon going to get the better of them. She hurried away to Deacon Hosmer's home and handed over the message. Then she added the news that the two strangers were in town. We must know more about them, said the deacon. He turned to his wife and said, send her with some eggs to Mrs. Bliss. Tabby can look around while she rests and gossips over there. We must keep track of Bliss's activities, for he is a Tory and will do us harm. Coming to the Tory's house about noon, she could smell roasting meat and baking pies. Stepping softly to the back door, she peeped in and saw Mrs. Bliss and her maid cooking in the big kitchen. They were too busy to notice the little spy who slipped round to the front of the house. What she saw made her suspicious. In the dining room, a table was set in great style with the best china and a fine long tablecloth. Still another peep through the living room windows showed her the two strangers with Mr. Bliss. Unfortunately, they talked in too low a tone for word to reach even her sharp ears. I must know what they are planning. I'm sure it's bad, and I won't go home till I find out, thought Tabby. Marching into the kitchen, she presented her eggs with a message from Madame Hosmer. They are mighty welcome, child. We've unexpected company for dinner, said Mrs. Bliss. Can I help, ma'am? I'm quite good at beating eggs. Besides, I'm tired and wouldn't mind sitting a bit if I'm not in the way, said Tabby. But you are in the way, said the old maid. We don't want any help, so you'd better be stepping along home. Picking up her basket, Tabby marched out of the kitchen with her nose in the air. But as she passed the front of the house, she could not resist another look through the open window. As she leaned in, something moved under the long tablecloth that swept the floor. Suddenly, out popped a grey cat's head. Then the cat came up purring to meet the newcomer. Do I dare do it? What will happen to me if they find me? But how wonderful it would be if I could hear what these men are plotting, Tabby thought to herself. Hiding the basket among the bushes, she leapt lightly in. And while the cat sat on the windowsill, 
calmly washing its face, she vanished under the table. Tabby's heart began to flutter. It was too late to retreat. The poor girl could only make herself as small as possible, quite hidden under the long folds of the tablecloth. But by the time the guests were called in, Tabby was calm again. For a time, the hungry gentlemen were too busy eating to talk much. But soon, they were ready for business. They drew closer together and spoke in low voices. However, she heard enough to prove that she was right. The newcomers were Captain Brown and another junior of Ricer of the British Army. They had come to find out where the supplies were stored and how well the town was defended. These people won't fight, will they? asked Captain Brown. Of course they will. They will fight you to the death, answered Mr. Bliss. The captain swore. He gave a stamp that brought his heavy heel down on Tabby's hand as she leaned forward. The blow nearly forced a cry from her. Though faint with pain, she bit her lips and never stirred. When she could listen again, Mr. Bliss was telling the visitors all he knew about the hiding places of the gunpowder, the cannons and other things the enemy wished to seize and destroy. Just as they were preparing to leave the table, Tabby was overcome by a sudden sneeze. She thought she was lost. She hid her face, expecting to be dragged out any moment. What's that? exclaimed the officer. It came from under the table, added Captain Brown. A hand lifted a corner of the cloth. A shiver went through Tabby. She held her breath with her eye upon the big brown hand. But the next moment she could have laughed with joy, for the cat saved her. The cat had come to doze on her warm skirts. Now, when the cloth was raised, thinking she was to be fed, the cat rose and walked out, purring loudly, tail straight up, with its white tip waving like a flag of truce. It's only the cat, gentlemen, a good beast and luckily for us, unable to report our talk, said Mr. Bliss with a sigh of relief. Soon after this, they left the room and the three men, the two visitors and the local Tory, set off for Boston. Then the spy crept out softly, jumped over the windowsill and ran away as fast as her stiff legs would carry her. By the time she told her tale, however, the British soldiers were well on their way to Boston, so they managed to escape. But the warning was given, and Tabby received great praise for her hour under the table. The people had time to move the valuable supplies to other towns nearby. They got their cannons ready, and their Minutemen had them trained on the enemy. Those brave farmers meant to fight, and the world knows how well they did it when the hour came. Much later, when the fighting was over, the dead buried, the wounded cared for, and the Tories punished, Daniel Bliss's property was taken over by the government. Many of his things were sold at an auction. Tabby's uncle bought the tablecloth and gave it to her, saying, There, my girl, this rightly belongs to you. Thanks to your quick eyes and ears, we were not taken by surprise, but sent the redcoats back faster than they came. Tabby kept the tablecloth carefully, displaying it with immense satisfaction whenever she told the story. Then it was preserved by her daughter as a token of her mother's bravery. In 1861, Tabby's tablecloth saw another war and made an honorable end as a boxful of finest lint and softest squares to lay on the wounds of soldiers at war. <laughs>